Stephen had just given. Uh, I'm Chrissy Burns from the Poly U, and I'll be um, touching on some of my experiences and thoughts uh, in my journey being a materials developer over the years. I've prepared a bit too much, so I'm going to zip through a few things um, quite quickly and focus a bit more on my experience to share a few of them with you and some of my philosophies. So I grounded myself by going into um, and kind of reviewing Tomlinson's principles of materials development, which are summarized here. Um, I'm going to, PPT will be available obviously, so you can refer back to that. And as I was thinking about, well, you know, what makes me um, have a level of expertise, I thought about my personal qualities. I, I think that's part of it. I've always been a very curious person interested in learning, and if I'm interested in something, I get very passionate about it. I'm a wide reader. I love going to conferences. I watch a million YouTube videos. And I feel like that has been part of my process in developing a level of expertise. I'm quite a deep thinker. Um, so these are some of the, uh, you know, important principles, I'd say, that influence my development in materials development. Uh, coming from having taught in Korea for five years, I noticed such a difference with the local students here in, in Hong Kong. Um, and was, you know, really struck by their life experiences, the packed schedule, the long commute, asking them about their, you know, interest in reading. I, many, most of them don't read. And um, some research uh, I, I was engaged with, um, all the interview participants, uh, 15 of them, ex all of them reported shameful experiences with learning English in the past. So I feel like this is something um, quite important uh, as a materials developer that you really start with the students and think of something that's going to be motivating and in, um, to them and engage them. Because of course without their attention, there is no learning, right? Uh, let me see. So, a few years back, we had the pleasure of having uh, Zoltan Dornier at Poly U, um, who of course uh, you know, is the expert in motivational strategies. One thing that really struck me in his talk was he, he talked about how he was um, developing a textbook on, with teaching activities, and uh, he had a discussion about the topic was sex. And it didn't go over well with the publishers, knowingly, but he thought it was a great topic. You want the students to get talking. Uh, this is something that they are interested in. Uh, so that struck me and um, perhaps inspired one of the activities I made, um, teaching the, uh, uh, the objectives for a proposal and wanting a focus on form and parallel structure. You know, who is your ideal partner? I'd like you to write the objectives for who your ideal partner is. Um, and lots of, you know, different theories about learning and whatnot. I really like this one from Think. And as a materials developer, I think, okay, information and ideas. The students need, uh, need this. And I feel like, um, at least in the context of what we are, we're always developing new courses, revising them, etc. There's so much out there that I feel like being able to be a good curator of information and ideas is really important. You know, having a vast, uh, accumulating um, great videos that, that, that teach certain things, authentic texts that will speak to the students, and um, bringing in different ideas, you know, teaching them about the theories of reflection and learning so that they understand the process a bit more. Okay, experience. Of course, we need to provide them um, meaningful experiences, communicating and using the language. And the importance of reflection, I feel like that's maybe something that has been neglected or is something to be, um, it's important that can and should be included in the materials development. Uh, so, no need to go into Highland, we're all familiar with him, but the genre context has been I'm sorry, the genre of pedagogy has been very influential in me, for me, and uh, uh, time is a bit tight, but I thought, okay, I wanted the topic for um, teaching students to give persuasive presentations. And they're more familiar with academic presentations. So we're deconstructing what 
speaking, pres speaking uh, persuasive presentations are, what am I supposed to have an awareness of audience, purpose, context, and how one might adjust their delivery and language based on those factors? So I gave the students all the topic of smartphones. You're going to give a presentation on smartphones. Really excited about that. They love their phones, right? And they were in groups that had different audiences. You're going to present to primary school students. You're going to present to customers at Smartone. And you'll be presenting to ex um, engineers at Apple. And kind of let them go at it. And you could see the, you know, their brains whirring as they realize, OK, this is my audience. So what's my purpose going to be? And how, how should I uh, act with them? What will my body language be in language? Um, so I think this is an example of you know, scaffolding their learning towards something greater, but bringing in the local context and something meaningful to the students that actually can be really quite powerful. Um, so, I really like this definition of reflection, which brings in the affective aspect of learning as being important as well as the cognitive. So I'll briefly touch on this taxonomy from Fink, which I, I really like. I feel we often focus on the things on the top when we're thinking about materials. But I feel like we can bring more and have more focus on these things on the bottom, which are more personalized to the students, maybe, making the learning um, more relevant and meaningful for them. All right, this is a bit wide, but uh, I won't go into technology. Of course, that's you know, the future of materials development. But again, I want to bring up the idea of the, of the materials developer being a curator, of um, just having an awareness of the relevant and uh, uh, effective texts and information and ideas, videos, that can be used in class. And my students are not readers. You know, if you present them with a 60-page student notes, I'm not sure how much reading goes on. So maybe the materials being a bit more like a workbook. It's something that they personalize. They bring in the ideas and information which they found relevant. Um, and those are my thoughts today. Thank you very much.